Did you just find out that your blood sugar levels are elevated, but you aren't really sure what they should be? Then stay tuned, because in this video, I'm sharing what normal blood sugar levels are, why they matter, and how to get your blood sugar into a healthy range. Hey everybody, Erin here with Healthy Mom, Happy Family, and thanks so much for joining me here today. You know, as a registered dietitian and a certified diabetes educator, I'm always getting asked questions about blood sugar levels. And I find that many people, you know, they start to panic when they hear that their blood sugar is high, but they don't always really know what that actually means or what a normal blood sugar level is. So I thought this would be a really great opportunity to take a little bit of time and make this video to clear up that confusion about blood sugar levels, um, basically so that you can feel better about that and you really know what to strive for when we talk about what's an improved blood sugar level or what's a normal blood sugar level. Now, before we dive in, I just want to remind you that if you are here because you are trying to prevent type 2 diabetes or manage type 2 diabetes, I would love to invite you to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss new educational videos, recipes, and tips and tricks. Thanks so much for being here and I'm so excited to meet you. Okay, so in today's video, I'm telling you everything you need to know about your blood sugar levels. So we are gonna talk about what normal blood sugar levels are for people without diabetes as well as for people who have diabetes. I'm also gonna be sharing with you what blood sugar levels should be when you're fasting, right? Which fasting means when we haven't eaten over an overnight fast as well as what your blood sugar levels should be after you eat. And then I'm gonna also discuss with you what A1C levels are, what that number means and why it matters. Okay, so let's talk about what normal blood sugar levels are. Now, the thing to remember when it comes to blood sugar is that it changes throughout the day. Um, blood sugar is impacted by many, many things, including what you're eating throughout the day and your activity level. So there's not really this one single number that you're striving for. It's always a range. Now, if you don't have diabetes, people without diabetes, their blood sugar will range in the area from 70 to 130 throughout the day. So when we talk about normal blood sugar levels and ranges, um, we look at the American Diabetes Association to really give us the guidelines. And so according to the American Diabetes Association, the normal blood sugar ranges for people without diabetes are to have a fasting morning blood sugar. So without eating, that's what fasting is. When you wake up in the morning, it should be under 100. Now for those same individuals, if they were to test their blood sugar an hour after a meal, it could be anywhere from 90 to 130. And two hours after a meal, it could be anywhere from 90 to 110. Five hours after a meal, it should be closer to that fasting range. So somewhere between 70 to 90. And if we look at A1C, and I'll talk about this in more detail, but the A1C level is your three month average blood sugar. So what your blood sugar has averaged over the last three months, people without diabetes should be under the number 5.7%. So let's look a little bit more at the blood sugar ranges for people who have pre-diabetes as well as people who have diabetes. Okay, so this is where we start to see blood sugar begins to creep up, especially when we talk about pre-diabetes. It's that warning sign that you're at risk of developing type 2 diabetes and we need to take action. So if you have a doctor telling you that you're at risk of developing type 2 diabetes or they say to you, you know, you have pre-diabetes, what this means is that your blood sugar levels are running higher than that normal range for people without diabetes. So there's ranges for blood sugar that we consider a pre-diabetic category or pre-diabetes, and then there's a range of blood sugar levels that really help us to diagnose somebody and say that they actually have diabetes because of where their blood sugar levels are running. So when it comes to pre-diabetes, this would be a fasting blood sugar between 100 to 125. And two hours after a meal, you'll see blood sugar between 140 to 199. And that three month average blood sugar, that A1C level, will be anywhere from 5.7 to 6.4%. Uh, now, remember that these are considered elevated blood sugar levels, okay? These aren't goals. So if you found out that you have prediabetes or you have elevated blood sugar, this is kind of where your blood sugar levels are falling and the goal is now to work to get them back into that non-diabetic range. Now, for people who have diabetes, type one or type two diabetes, this is kind of where we find their blood sugar levels at upon diagnosis. So a fasting blood sugar over 126, a blood sugar over 200 two hours after a meal, or an A1C, that three month average range, over 6.5%. So if that's what your blood work indicates, that's when somebody will say to you, you know, you've been diagnosed with diabetes. 
Now what I want you to remember is that type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes are very different forms of diabetes. I know most of you who join me here are people who have type 2 diabetes. So you'll usually see that your blood sugar has gradually increased over time until you get that diagnosis of type 2 diabetes. A person with type 1, because their pancreas stops producing insulin, they will generally on diagnosis have much higher blood sugar levels because um, it can come on very suddenly. Where type 2 diabetes for most individuals is a more gradual process. So sometimes you'll see that you're in that pre-diabetic category as your body becomes more insulin resistant and then it creeps up into the diagnosis of type 2 diabetes. So if you do see that your blood sugar is creeping up above normal and you haven't yet been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, that's your warning sign that we need to do something about this and we need to work to bring those blood sugar levels back down. Okay, so I mentioned that A1C number a few times, so I wanted to share with you a little bit more about what A1C is, because I'm sure you're wondering, especially if you haven't heard the term before. So your A1C level is a measure of your average blood sugar levels over the past three months. And when we look at A1C levels, this can indicate prediabetes or diabetes. And even if you have diabetes, your diabetes care team will look at this number usually every three months because it's really gonna help them to determine if your current treatment plan is working or if it needs to be adjusted. For people without diabetes, a normal range for this is under 5.7%. Um, but for people with diabetes, generally we'll see the recommendation is you know, between six and a half to 7%, that's kind of the desired range to prevent health complications. But that's not gonna be the range for everyone. Um, your ranges for A1C are really gonna be specific to you, your personalized goals, your blood sugar levels, and your needs. Um, especially for people with type one diabetes, many times these A1C goals are a little higher because if we're aiming for too low of a goal, that can run the risk of hypoglycemia or very low blood sugar. Okay, so what you wanna remember about A1C is it's your three month average. So instead of just seeing what your blood sugar is for one moment at time, one day, this gives us the bigger picture to really know how your blood sugar management is doing over time. Now, I know it can be a little confusing with A1C because it's presented as a percentage and you're used to seeing um, numbers when it comes to testing blood sugar. So you're used to seeing a blood sugar of 120 and not a percentage. So to help you with this, I wanted to kind of share with you what these percentages mean as a blood sugar level. So if we looked at an A1C of a 6%, that's pretty much equivalent to an average glucose level of 126. If your A1C is at 7%, that's equivalent to an average glucose level of 154. Okay, I'm gonna include a link below to a blog post where I share a lot more about A1C and those estimated average blood glucose levels so you can really see what it means for you. Um, that link's below in the description because I think it's just once you see it on paper, it makes it a little easier to understand. So let's talk a little bit about why A1C matters, because to me, this is one of the most important measurements that you want to focus on. So I really want you to understand what it means. Um, when you know your average blood sugar level over the past three months, this is so useful because you know more than just that snapshot in time that seeing your fasting blood sugar in the morning is telling you or seeing it right after a meal. So this is so important because the longer your blood sugar stays elevated, the more time it has to do damage to your body, right? So if you're testing your blood sugar, you're only testing in the morning and it always looks good, but maybe your blood sugar is spiking at other times during the day, you're not gonna know that. But when we look at your A1C, we see the average and we see that it's creeping up. Now we know that somewhere along the line, there's times of day or certain days where blood sugar is elevated. And now we know we need to take action. And in order to determine what action we need to take, it might mean that we have to test a little more frequently and determine what times of day we're running high and what we can do. But it is so, so important because having healthy blood sugar levels is how you prevent complications associated with diabetes. So know what your A1C number is. If you don't know, ask your diabetes care team to tell you and get it tested. But the goal here for most of us is to keep A1C below 7%. Um, sometimes it's gonna be recommended to keep it under 6.5% depending on your personal health goals. If you're someone who's prone to hypoglycemia or you're on insulin or you have type one diabetes, many times this range is gonna be a little higher. So let's talk about what impacts your blood sugar levels. So blood sugar isn't just impacted by the foods that you eat or even the exercise that you do. There are so many things that can influence your blood sugar. Uh, for instance, if you're stressed, that can make your blood sugar levels go up. If you're sick, if you're injured, if you're overly excited or stimulated, 
Um, even if you're menstruating, all of these things directly impact your blood sugar levels. And this is why you really need to be in tune with what those normal levels are and be testing regularly because it's really going to help you to understand your body's own individual needs and your body's own response to certain situations, not just food and not just exercise. And it's so important to know what impacts blood sugar levels because that is what's going to help you to make the necessary changes you need to make to your diet and your lifestyle and even your medications with the guidance of your healthcare team to really help you to stay on track and hit your own individual blood sugar and A1C goals. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how to determine the best blood sugar goals for you. Because you might be assuming that the goal would be to get your blood sugar back into that normal range, that 70 to 130 that's considered normal for people without diabetes. But that's not really the case for you and your individual needs, okay? Because for instance, if let's say you were <clears throat> trying to get your blood sugar into this range and you had type 1 diabetes, you're on insulin, or you have type 2 diabetes and you take insulin, and you're trying to get your blood sugar down to this ideal range, you could actually be at risk of developing too low a blood sugar, what we call hypoglycemia. And just like having a blood sugar that's too high is dangerous to health, if your blood sugar is too low, that can also be extremely dangerous to your health. So that normal range isn't always the ideal range for you. We have to really determine what's the best blood sugar goal for you and A1C goal, because it's all about striking a balance, right? And getting to that right balance at a specific moment in time. So your lifestyle, your health needs, your dietary goals, all of those things are gonna factor into finding the right blood sugar goals and the right A1C goals for you. And so this isn't something I can tell you. This is going to be a conversation you have with your diabetes care team. And they're going to look at everything. They're going to look at your individual goals and your progress and where your blood sugar is right now, your risk of things like hypoglycemia. All of that is going to be a part of that conversation when they help you to determine what are the correct blood sugar goals for you to strive for as an individual. So if you're not sure what your blood sugar goals are when you wake up in the morning, after meals or before meals and those A1C goals, ask your diabetes care team because they're the ones who are going to help you to determine the correct blood sugar goals for you as an individual. All right, so let's talk about the bottom line on blood sugar levels and your goals. So knowing what your blood sugar levels are and then knowing what they should be for you when you have diabetes, that's what's gonna help you to manage the disease and to really help to keep you in the best possible health and prevent future complications. Because having diabetes, what it really means is you just have to learn to be in tune with your blood sugar balance and your body and your own individual responses to everything from food and medication to exercise and stress. And tracking your blood sugar, knowing what your range is and knowing when you're at a range, that's going to help you to know when you need to make changes. Now, I want you to remember over time, your goals and even your treatment plan when it comes to diabetes can change. And this is why it is so, so important that you work with your diabetes care team. This is probably the number one thing you can do for your health because they're gonna help you to identify what's the right goal for you right now, what's the right goal for you in the future, and how you can get there. You know, you don't have to manage diabetes on your own and you definitely shouldn't try. You wanna make sure you can set yourself up for the best possible success. And the way to do that is to get yourself set up with a really good diabetes care team that understands you as an individual. And if you don't know how to do this, you don't know how to set up your diabetes care team, ask. You know, your, your primary physician can help you, your endocrinologist, your dietitian, everybody can work together with you to create the best diabetes care team for you. So let me know, do you know what your specific blood sugar goals are and your A1C goals are? Comment below and let me know and tell me if they've changed because, you know, somebody who's newly diagnosed with diabetes might not be aware that these goals can change over time. So let me know in the comments below how's it going for you. If you are just diagnosed with diabetes or you have pre-diabetes and you're wondering what the goals are for you, let me know below. And I am so glad that you were here with me today. If you liked today's video, make sure you subscribe so you never miss new tips and tricks and recipes to help you best manage diabetes. So thanks so much for joining me here today and I look forward to seeing you next time.